are so glad that you're joining us for day two of our road trip journey. We had so much fun yesterday beginning our exploration with Moses as a little baby and traveling through 40 years of his life. Today we're going to be picking up on Moses' journey after he fled Egypt. Moses spent the next 40 years in Midian. He became a shepherd, he got married, he had two babies. Now during this time, God taught Moses patience. And this is a gift that he used in the calling God had for his life. Just when Moses thought his life was settled, God came back and heated it up. Shepherds spend a lot of time in the desert and have to be on a constant lookout for their sheep as well as any dangers around them. Let's see what we can be on the lookout for in our activity. For our activity today, we will be having a scavenger hunt and hunting the items that are a part of the plan for Moses' life. Run around your house and see how fast you can find some honey, a leaf, some milk, a cotton ball, a sandal, and a stick. And push pause to see if you can find all the items listed on the screen around your house. Make sure you place your honey someplace for safekeeping because it will be used again on day four. Miss Becky and Miss Emily has started their road trip. I wonder where their first stop on the road trip is going to be. I think it is going to be a hot one. I am so excited for the second day of our road trip. I'm glad that all of our bags are in the car. We got snacks. I'm so ready. You never know what we might need. I wonder what we'll need for today's Bible story. I know. Well, how about let's ask Koa to see what Bible story is for today. Okay. Hey, Koa, what's our Bible story today? Today's story is going to be a fiery one. It is found in Exodus 3. You better be prepared. Fiery? Oh, I have the perfect thing for this. Let's see, hold on. Maybe it's behind, oh, maybe it's behind this suit. Okay, hold on. No suitcases back there. Here it is. I can be prepared for a fire. Um, I think I know someone who might be able to prepare us just a little bit more. Oh, really? Yeah, how about I'll drive there and you read the Bible story for us so we can see what it's about. Okay, excellent. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush was on fire and did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into the good, spacious land, a flowing land with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hideous, Amoritus, Perezitus, <laughs> Hivites and Jebusites. Those are some hard words right there. Some hard words. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that is, I have sent. When you have brought the people of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Crazy. That was wow, a great story. That was so neat. So Mer Moses saw a burning bush that wasn't burning up. And, and God told him to go back to Egypt, the place he fled from, to free God's people. 
people. Wow, I meant Moses was really scared. He was, it sounded like. In fact, he tried to tell God he wasn't the right person to do this job, but God was preparing him for his calling. Wow, so did um, God come and send firefighters to put the bush out? No. Oh, that's he, not how he prepared He him. talked to Moses through the bush and gave him signs to prepare him and show him that he would always be with him. He also sent Moses' brother Aaron to help Moses. That's awesome. So God will always prepare and always equip Moses and us for anything that he calls us to do. Yeah, just like firefighters in our life. We, they are prepared and equipped all the time to go fight fires and save us and help us. You know what? Right up here are the firefighters I was telling you about. Oh. Let's go see how they can show us to prepare for a fighting fire. Awesome. God called Moses to do something big, and Moses wasn't sure if he could do it, but God prepared him each and every step of the way. Mr. Nelson and Rowan are going to show us how to get ready and be prepared for a fire. Ready, set, go! It is time for a road trip game. Do you like listening to music during your road trip? Have you ever played the Name the Tune game? I will play you three songs from previous VBS years. See if you can figure out the name of them from 10 second clips. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. Tessa, will you teach us verse 2? Sure. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Psalm 40, verse 2. Repeat after me now. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. Out of the mud and mire. Out of the mud and mire. He set he, he set my feet on a rock. He set my feet on a rock. And gave me a firm place to stand. And gave me a firm place to stand. Psalm 40 verse 2. Psalm 40, verse 2. Good job. Let's try verse 1 and 2 together. I 
waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 2. Can you say both verses without us?
In your suitcases there should be some snacks labeled A2. Grab those and watch our Bible story with Miss Becky. Good morning. Welcome to day two of Vacation Bible School. And today I am Zipporah. Maybe many of you don't know who in the world Zipporah is. That's a strange name, isn't it? But believe it or not, I am the lady that, be that became Moses' wife. And I bore him two sons. But let me take you back to where we were yesterday. This is how I met Moses. Moses, remember how yesterday I told you Moses had gotten very, very angry when he saw his own people being mistreated by the Egyptians? And he came across a fight where an Egyptian was mistreating and beating one of the Hebrew slaves? And he got so angry that he beat the Egyptian and ended up killing him? Well, some bad things ended up happening that next day for Moses. When he got up, it was very interesting you would think that the Hebrew people would have been thrilled that Moses was now on their side and, and taking a defense and making a stand. But just the opposite happened. The next day he was walking down the street. He saw two Hebrews getting angry with each other. Well, he goes over to, to see what's going on and see if he can be of help. And one of the Hebrews turns to him and says, Oh, Moses, what? You going to try to kill me now too like you did the Egyptian? He realized then that the word had gotten out of what he had done. He knew he was in trouble. He ran back to the palace, then only to find out from the servants that Pharaoh had also found out that he had killed an Egyptian, and he was angry. He was after Moses. He was trying to hunt him down because the Pharaoh was so angry at him, his own family, that he was going to kill him. So Moses realized he needed to leave. So he got his things, and he fled. He ran as far as he could into the desert, and he ended up into a place called Midian. Now, Midian was also relatives of Abraham. They would have also descended from Abraham, just like the Israelites. But he comes up onto this well, and there's this big well where shepherds would come and draw water for their sheep. Well, that's where I come into the story. I'm Zipporah, and I am one of the seven daughters of the high priest of Midian, Jethro. I was there getting water in the, in the well for my sheep, and some other shepherds come along, and they're harassing us. They're giving us a hard time. They're chewing us in the, away. They're bullying us and not letting us get the water. Well, here comes who is Moses. I didn't know his name at the time. He comes up to our defense, and he says, Why are you mistreating these ladies? Let them get their water for their flocks. So Moses helped us not only get water, he he calls the other shepherds to have to leave. And then he was so kind to us when we ran back and told our father Jethro what had happened. My, our father insisted that Moses come and live with us. So he came and feasted with us and lived with us. And we heard his story and we heard all that God had done for his family. Well, we fall in love and I become Moses' wife. We have two sons and Moses in return became a shepherd for my father's sheep. He spent 40 years in the desert all around taking my sheep, taking our sheep to feed them, to protect them, to give them water, to give them exercise, everything that a shepherd does. He was learning patience. Remember how I said yesterday that he wasn't a very patient man? He was a reactionary? Well, it was during this time of being a shepherd, 40 years in the desert with sheep, that he learned humility and patience, and he learned who he was who he was called to be because one, one day, very, very strange, he had walked his sheep over to the mountain of God, Mount Sinai, maybe that sounds familiar to some of you, and he saw a bush on fire. Well, he came home and told us that he walked over to the bush to see what in the world was going on because he knew it was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. Next thing you know, he hears the voice of God calling through the flame of the, of the fire of the flaming bush. And he said, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am, yes. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do not come any closer. As a matter of fact, he told Moses to take his shoes off, that he was standing on holy ground. So Moses not only takes his shoes off, but he bows down and he listens to what the voice of God is telling him. And he says, Moses, I have heard the cries of my people. The Israelites, remember the slaves back in Egypt? I have heard how mis mistreated they are 
and I am going to use you to set them free. Well, my husband, I told you he was educated by the Egyptians, but he did not feel confident in speech. He did not feel like he was an orator or someone that could go and speak with power. But, but, but God said, I will go with you. You need to go. I'm calling you and I need to use you. Again, Moses protested. I can't do it. I'm scared. I'm shy. I can't speak. Well, then Moses said an interesting thing. He said, your brother Aaron, he's good with words. And as a matter of fact, he's on his way right now to, to meet you. Aaron coming all the way from Egypt to Midian? Why? Because God had told Aaron to come where Moses was. Well, sure enough, Aaron shows up. And Moses and Aaron reunite after 40 years. And Moses realizes, this is my call. This is what God has called me to do. So we send him to Egypt. I stay with my family and the boys, and he goes off to Egypt to go before Pharaoh with Aaron to say, let my people go. And that's where we'll pick up tomorrow. Grab your family discussion sheets, pause the video, and answer the following questions. motions that go with the chorus. So, we're going to slow it down at first and teach you the motions. Now it's time to take a pit stop with our pastors. Well, all right, we're here for another day of carpool karaoke. 
you didn't know you needed this until you are about to experience. I think they're not gonna know when it's over either, Cal. Yep. Will this be yeah. over? Yet? There's somebody behind us and they're totally staring at us. Okay. Oh, yeah. Until next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let my people go. Ha 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 ha. Hi everyone. It's time for day two crafting. So we need you to get your day two bag out of your suitcase and you will need the glue from yesterday and you'll also need to find a pair of scissors so if you need to pause to go get some scissors go ahead and do that and then uh, come come back all right so you should have a jar and you want to open the jar and take out AJ can you see what's in here Ooh, what's in there what's in there what's in there Can you take out the candle? All right, put the candle to the side. Black. And then also you have a black strip of paper. And so today, since we talked about the burning bush, you wanna take your black piece of paper and cut out, cut it, it to make like it that. look like a bush. So you just wanna kind of cut it so it looks a little bit spiky at the top. Like this, right? You ever got one of these bags? Okay, so cut it, so you just want to keep cutting it all the way around. I don't know how good I am at this. Okay, to make it look like a bush. And then we're going to roll it up, and we're going to put it back, look. Okay, so just stick it on there like that. Cool. 
Okay, we're gonna need some more glue. Can we put some more glue around so we can stick some more on there? All right. Do you want to put some tissue paper on here, Joshua? What color do you want to do? To make it look like fire. Orange. Orange? Okay. Orange on there. It's falling off. Done, done, done. Okay. Let's stick it up so it looks like flames. See? I know how to make really good. All right. So you just keep doing that all the way around. And then once it is dry, what's this, AJ? A candle. And can you turn the candle on? Pull this little pink tab. Make sure you pull out the pink tab so that it lets the battery start, okay? Pull that out, AJ. Pull it hard. No! Stop, okay. I'll pull it. And then can you turn it on? There's a little black switch and you want to turn that to on. Look. Push it all the way. All the way. Push it. And look. Our candle turns on and then once you put it inside your jar it's hard to tell because our lights on but it looks like the burning bush Josh can you go See? turn the lights off yeah. all right hold on wait can you tell uh, uh, not really <laughs> all right that's it uh, for day two no? thanks everybody no? see you tomorrow
Today started with Moses meeting the lady that would become his wife, becoming a shepherd for the next 40 years, and God throwing a fiery curveball into Moses' life when God came through to him through a burning bush and told him the purpose for his life was to free God's people. I can't wait to see what kind of splash we're going to make on our next stop of the road trip. Emily, will you close us in prayer? Yeah. Dear God, we know we must trust in you and stay strong and stay true to ourselves, even through hard times. We know you have a plan for every single thing we do and every one of us. Even if it isn't clear to us yet, we know and we must believe in you and see through the wrong and what lies ahead. Amen. Join us tomorrow for a sea-splitting adventure.